How's it going everyone? So when we're drawing, it's important to keep our drawing media nice and sharp. So today I'm going to go over a method to sharpen your drawing media to a long, thin, tapered point. First off, I wanted to go over uh, some of the reasons why you'd want to sharpen your drawing media to that long, tapered point. Normally we sharpen our, our drawing media to kind of a shorter, um, wider point and this has its advantages you know it comes in handy when we're we're writing you know holding the the pencil up up close to the end um, writing words or letters you know a short point is fine uh, but when we're drawing figures or representational objects conveying light and shadow um, it's handy to have your drawing media sharpened to a longer thinner uh, point. And the reason why is that it allows you to use the side of, of the drawing media more. This gives you a, a broader, looser mark, a lighter mark. This allows us to use the pencil uh, almost like a brush. So I can hold the, the pencil further down uh, the length of the pencil. Um, this activates more of my arm when I'm drawing. Uh, it gives, gives me a nice, looser, wider mark. This comes in really handy uh, at the beginning of, of a drawing when we're um, searching for shapes and sizes and proportions. So using a lighter mark uh, is going to make making changes and corrections to our drawing a lot easier. Holding the pencil further down the length of the pencil moves our hand out of the way uh, so we can see a little bit better what we're drawing. I have a little more control over the, uh, the subtlety of, of the, the value of the mark. Uh, one of the other benefits of sharpening your pencil to a longer point is that it'll maintain that point longer. Uh, longer than this shorter uh, point here. And that's important, you know, when you're in the middle of a drawing and we're focused on seeing, um, it can be distracting when our, our pencil starts to dull, the point starts to, to round out and get dull. And uh, we have to break that focus, break that concentration to sharpen the pencil. And this sharpening technique can be used for any dry drawing media some sanguine Conte pencils, black Conte pencils sh uh, sharpened to that longer point. Of course, I've got my graphite pencils in different grades sharpened to that longer point. A white charcoal pencil. Uh, I've got some Neutrum soft charcoal, some willow charcoal that I like to sharpen to a longer tapered point. So it works on lots of different types of media. You know, just keep in mind that the softer media, like the charcoal or the um, the Conte, I may not be able to get as as long and thin of a point, right, as I could with a, a harder material like graphite. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate on this pencil that I had uh, broken. This is an H graphite pencil. Some of the tools you'll need include a a knife, I've got an X-Acto knife here. Any utility knife or X-Acto knife will work all right. Um, I've got a, a dust mask, this is important. Um, we're going to be creating some graphite or charcoal dust. Um, and it is kind of messy, so I usually have paper towels on hand. And we'll also need some sort of sanding block. This is a double-sided Neutrum sanding block. You can also make your own sanding block. You know, if you just get a block of wood, um, wrap some fine grit sandpaper around it, um, you can make your own sanding block. Um, and I recommend uh, something that's not too rough, you know, a, a 200 or 220 grit sandpaper would probably work well. I've also got a, a little trash can that I use here to collect my dust. And I also use a, an air purifier filter catches that dust. So be safe when you're doing this. So the first thing you want to do with your X-Acto knife is to remove the wood that's surrounding the 
graphite core. And I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife to do that. And I'm gonna hold the blade at a really shallow angle uh, with respect to the, the pencil, almost parallel to the, the edge of the pencil. Right now I'm not, I'm not shaving anything off, right? I'm just uh, practicing the motion and the angle here. As I start to gradually tilt the blade toward the pencil, it's going to start shaving some of that wood off, right? It's a good idea to make sure you've got a nice sharp blade. Be safe when you're, when you're using the blade. You know, don't cut toward yourself, always cut away from yourself. Uh, watch out for pets or loved ones nearby, classmates nearby. You don't want to dig down really hard into the pencil. If you're having, if you're noticing that you're having, you're getting caught and you're having to use a lot of strength just to get the blade through, you're probably holding the blade at too steep of an angle. Or you're digging down too far, right? Uh, make it nice and easy. I'm also bracing my hand against the edge of the, the trash bin, which gives me a little more stability and control. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got uh, a stable uh, setting, right? If I'm, my hands are just kind of floating out here in space, it's hard to have control, right? My, my, my motions are a little too uh, jerky, uh, and that can get kind of dangerous, right? So I'm gonna brace my hands here up against the, the edge of the, the trash bin. Another technique, cutting technique that you can use, um, I'm just using this pretty straightforward technique. I'm holding the pencil in one hand, my knife in the other, and I'm using uh, the, the force of, of the, the cutting hand, directing that force out towards the end of the pencil. Um, I could, another alternate cutting technique, and one that might be a little safer, and if you've got kind of a longer blade, it can, it can come in handy. Instead of using the force out this way with this cutting hand, I'll use the force of my thumb and I'll, I'll push it. Uh, so the thumb that's holding the pencil, I'll use it to, to push the, the blade out towards the end of it. So I'm basically keeping the, the knife hand still and I'm using my thumb here on the, the, the part that's holding the, my thumb on the hand that's holding the pencil to, to push it out. This, this can give you a little more control with certain knives. It's like you're peeling an apple or fruit or something. Right? So try out different techniques. Uh, See which one works for you. This process takes some practice, right? Uh, and you'll you'll break a lot of pencils. You'll go through a lot of pencils. You might practice on a cheap pencil or something you don't really care about uh, while you're learning for the first few times. You know, while you're getting used to the technique. And I want to remove enough wood so that I've got about inch or inch and a half of the, the graphite core exposed. And I'd like that transition from the wood to the graphite to be tapered, gradual transition. All right, so the, there's a, a few tech cutting techniques that you can use to, to remove that wood casing, right? The one where the force is coming from the cutting hand, the hand holding the knife. This other technique uses my thumb to push it out. I want this wood to be well out of my way when I'm drawing, so I'm going to go ahead and remove some more of that to get it 
get the wood part tapered a little more as well. All right, so once I've got that inch and a half or so of the, the graphite core exposed, I can now bring in my sanding block. I'm going to hold the pencil uh, parallel to the surface of the sanding block. I'm going to use a circular motion, and I'm just going to gradually pass it over the sandpaper. Not using any downward force. Just using forces that are directed parallel to the surface of the sanding block. I'm also gradually spinning, slowly spinning the pencil, sanding it. Every so often I'm going to stop, hold it up against the light background, check the progress. Takes time, patience, right? You're gonna be tempted to want to hurry up and sharpen that end so you'll hold it up at a steeper angle and that'll give you a sharper point quicker. But that's not gonna maintain that point for, for very long. All right, so I want it to gradually come to that point. Uh, down here where it's exposed at the bottom where it meets the wood, I want that to be the whitest part of the graphite. Then I want it to gradually get thinner and thinner as we get to the point. I like to use the pencil sharpening process as a way to begin a drawing session. Um, it's relaxing, it's meditative. I can use this time that I'm sharpening to plan what I'm going to do during this drawing session. I just get my mind focused, relaxed. while at the same time getting my drawing media focused. I like to get several pencils sharpened to this long point. So if I break one or if one, when one starts to get dull, I don't have to, to stop drawing to sharpen it. I've got one already out, another one there ready to go. Don't breathe this graphite dust in. Make sure you use a mask. this stuff away from food and drink. So we got that 5B now, sharpened to a nice long point. My H sharpened to that long point, ready to go. If, you're, if your media doesn't have a wood casing around it, like this uh, stick of charcoal, you can just skip the part with the knife and go right to the sanding block. Using the same technique, keeping the media parallel to the surface of the sanding block, slowly spinning it as I sand it. All right, that's it. Happy sharpening.